so today we're welcoming Linda Iverson in, and she is going to be speaking to us about her path to learning dowsing and how she uses it. Melinda is a dedicated guide to your evolving enlightened consciousness, a subtle body dowser, a public speaker, an intuitive self-healing facilitator, author, teacher, and the host of Wisdom Keepers of the Earth, a YouTube series that's now in its second season. She was voted by her peers at the ASD as the 2017 Dowser of the Year. She has presented and taught internationally. She has six books, and she will be presenting as the keynote speaker and doing a workshop at the ORI conference in April, April 19th through the 22nd. So hopefully, there you go. <laughs> Melinda, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I, that was really lovely. Thank you so much. <laughs> and if anybody's interested, I'll be I'll be heading over to uh, the British Society of Dowsers in May, uh, which coincides with their um, International Dowsing Day, which is May fifth on Hamish Miller's birthday. So anyway, I'll be I'll be there in Malvern, as they say Malvern. I kept saying Malvern. He said what? I said Malvern. Okay. He said, what? <laughs> So anyway, welcome. Um, gosh, thank you so much for having me. I see some new faces and some very familiar faces. It's been a while since I've been in the saddle. Usually I'm the, on the other side. So I'm excited to share this um, information with you. And um, so we'll just get started. I'm going to share my screen. Share screen. There it is. And let me know this is a, this is a huge. <laughs> it's there you go. You made it. Oh, good. <laughs> Excellent. So okay. for the, so for, for, aside from what Teresa has mentioned, um, I'm going to give you a quick little background on myself because a lot of you don't know me at all as a dowser or, you know, you have, you've never met me. We've never met. So here's a little rundown. I thought it'd be good for you to <laughs> kind of, I've been in the dowsing field for about 20 years now. Um, I began dowsing in 2003. I, I was very ill and I had, a, um, I was born with something and I uh, sought out a dowser, believe it or not, to help me after I had gone through all of the um, things that, um, medicine had to offer at the time. And then my first dowsing conference was 2008. And then I taught basic school from 2009 to 2015, along with Gary Clapp and um, Gladys McCoy and Ed Stillman and our very good uh, water dowsing friend. Gosh, I don't know, all of a sudden his name escaped me. Um, uh, uh, he lived on the other side of the mountain for me. His name will come to me. Anyway, uh, 2017, I was honored to um, be put up forward for Dowser of the Year. It was a, a wonderful thing to receive. Quite honored. From 2008 to 2018, I taught workshops at West Coast Conference, Southwest Conference, ORI, American Society of Dowsers, and BSD. Um, and then I've written a few books. <laughs> Published a few articles. Um, I started a YouTube series called Wisdom Keepers of Earth because um, I had reflected back on some of my teachers like Walt Woods and wished that I had interviewed them and learned from them so that I could share it with everyone. And so I started this um, series with that purpose in mind to bring forward the wisdom of the elders in the community. So right now, all I'm doing in 2024 is I'm, uh, I have a butterfly nursery, I've got my sea friends, and I'm perfecting my oat bread <laughs> baking. So I have a private practice, um, 20 years. So next, these are some of my dowsing friends. This is proof of what I've just said. <laughs> so there's Walt Woods and I in the corner. That was my first dowsing conference. The center, you'll recognize a D. Um, and uh, all my other beautiful friends there, Alan and um, Graham um, and uh, his wife, Elspeth. Uh, yeah, 
yeah, it's just wonderful times. And then lower, you'll see Gladys and Joyce and myself. And then one of my mentors was Pete Warburton. And uh, there's um, White Eagle in, in the um, upper right-hand corner. And if you'll notice with the picture with White Eagle, there's a little orb in the right-hand side there. I thought that was, um, Susan Collins took that photo and said, look, there's an orb. So anyway, I pulled these out of the archives, just so you know, I'm, I am who I say I am. <laughs> this is Wisdom Keepers of Earth. We are going to have Veda, Austin in 2024. These are some of the people that I've interviewed. Willie the Well Whisperer was my first interview. He's amazing. Greg Saras. Uh, he is the chairman of the Great and Rancheria um, Federated Indians. And he brought Mabel McKay, who was a Pomo Indian healer, to my um, to me as um, she taught me about her through a book of his. The Power of Empathy, that's Edwin Rush. You would love him. Uh, he has an empathy center in Santa Barbara. And, of course, um, Evelyn and... Um, you know, um, Pam Gregory there. Now, when I was a kid growing up, I was in Latin masses. I don't know if anybody else remembers Latin masses, but I was born aware um, and um, struggled with that most of my life. And so these Catholic masses were really, <laughs> you know, I remember the priest actually stopping the mass and asking my mother to take us all out, the four of us, the kids, because we were just not paying attention. <laughs> and I struggled with sleepwalking and I suffered from night terrors well into my 30s. And But the thing that really I wanted to share with you about this is that in seventh grade, I had a brain switch phenomena. So I was left brain. I could do long division math. I was very, very good at um, numbers um, up until about the seventh grade. And then one day it just switched. I would look at the page and I couldn't recognize the numbers anymore. I couldn't do the math. And uh, the teacher had called my home and said, what's going on? Of course, then everybody thought I wasn't studying hard enough or um, you know, paying attention enough. And I ended up in this remedial um, math, uh, it was very difficult. And I actually didn't realize there was this phenomena until years later. Um, I discovered that a lot of kids go through this. But moving from that left brain into the right brain allowed me to develop my intuition even more. Um, and so I, that that's a real thing. So if if you're with a child and this happens, it's a real phenomenon. It was difficult. So I went into studying different things. I I knew, I absolutely knew in my bones that healing for myself was possible. And I, this dowser was recommended to me um, by someone outside of the dowsing community. I didn't even know there was a group of dowsers. I had no idea that dowsing conferences existed. Um, but I did know that healing was absolutely possible. And I studied Christianity and Tibetan Buddhism and Zen Buddhism and Hinduism. And I joined the spiritualist church and I became a medium there. And I would do um, readings in front of the church congregation. So I was a medium much longer before I knew about dowsing. Dowsing came later. Um, I went into neuro neurolinguistic programming, seeking what they had to offer. I studied Paramahansa Yogananda, I became a Kriban, and I tried many other healers. I, I went wherever there was something happening, I was right there, but I realized that they just were not a good fit for me. So um, seeking is a good idea. Uh, it's now we're to the point now, is, am I going to receive what I need from that person? Or are most of the time what happened to me was they would feel a lot better and I would feel really bad for like three days, <laughs> which I didn't realize uh, was happening. Anyway, here's some of the um, influential people in my life. Ama, I've gotten hugs from Ama. I'm Dogen, if you have an opportunity, there's a wonderful film on Dogen. He was a 12th century 
um, monk he brought Zen to Japan um, from China. Mahatma Gandhi, Paramahansa, Jesus, St. Bernadette, St. Francis. I've been to visit St. Francis's um, tomb. Um, I haven't been to Lourdes, but I do, do have a, quite an affiliation with um, healing water. And um, anyway, so I highly recommend, you know, if you have a chance, check into these people. These are some of the others that have influenced me. Hamish Miller um, is a, was a Scottish dowser who lived in Cornwall, and he was, um, you'll know him from The Sun and the Serpent, discovered the Michael and Mary lines that move like a caduceus from the end of Cornwall all of the way to the edge of England. And he, um, I made a video in his honor where I um, visited the top of Mount Diablo where there's a cross of energy lines that create a fourth node. Um, and you can sit up there and meditate. And I, my friend Cynthia Sue Larson and I went up and did a video a la Hamish Miller I was driving, she was dowsing, and every time we'd cross the line, the rods would cross, we would get so excited. Of course, we were going up a mountain, so they would open, close. <laughs> it was great fun. If you have a chance to see the video, um, Mount Diablo video, anyway, he, he was marvelous, marvelous man. Padre Pio, um, I didn't meet in person, but I did meet him when I went to Italy. Um, he... He's now in my um, realm of, of um, guides. And Edgar Casey, of course, was a big influence. Patrick and Manaway, the reason I listed him was because his interview with me was phenomenal. I mean, he literally talked to me about his father being in Dunkirk as a young officer not having any medical supplies and realizing that he had healing abilities. And then Patrick, of course, talking to me about, you know, water suddenly coming into a ravine after he had been walking the land for a while, they had asked him to go find water. And um, it, there was before and after pictures of this long ravine that's dry and then it's filled with water. So I, I'm always wondering how the healing's coming, where they're coming from, how are they doing it? And I'm so curious about that. These are the books that I really uh, dug into. Autobiography of a Yogi, the Bhagavad Gita, Holy Science, Thich Nhat Hanh. The Three Pillars of Zen, the reason why I love that book is because in the back of the book, there's listings of sudden enlightenment. People having said their stories, I go, oh, I was riding on the bus and then all of a sudden I couldn't stop laughing and people were looking at me like I was a crazy person. <laughs> so anything like that piques my interest. I want to know how they got there, you know, what's being offered by these teachers, these great teachers. The Heart Sutra I've read over and over and over again. Honestly, I think it'll take a lifetime to understand it. And the Sutra of Hui Nang, he was the sixth patriarch. And the reason I like this book is because he was illiterate. He couldn't read or write. He worked in the kitchen. And um, he, was, he was able to have someone write for him. The fifth patriarch was looking for the sixth. He put up a phrase and he was looking for answers. And the sixth patriarch had someone write his answer on the wall next to it. Um, and then of course he had to flee because there was a lot of jealousy that a kitchen cook who was illiterate could become a patriarch. It's a, it's a marvelous book. Um, Fourth Uncle in the Mountain was the book that I brought forward um, when you had Veda Austin on because this book talks about the itinerant monk whose father told him that he could spray water uh, and create healing. And I thought, yeah, we, how, how do you do that? <laughs> I don't know if I want to spit on y'all, but, you know, let's, let's see how that works. And he also had an experience where he, he would draw symbols in the air. There's a whole um, background to that. It's kind of like um, Reiki, but in another direction. Mabel McKay, Weaving the Dream, she was a 
Homo Indian doctor, very influenced by her. She was called the sucking doctor and she would suck disease out of people. And she, she was alive until um, I would say the sixties, seventies. And she was the last of her kind. If you have a chance to read this book, this is uh, Greg Saras brought this forward. Mabel was amazing and she was a basket weaver. So you can find her baskets in permanent collections in the Smithsonian as well. And she used special baskets to suck out things and then spit into the basket. And it's, it's, it's a phenomenal read. Um, Love Without End, how can you, Glenda Green, artist, um, channeled Christ. This is a great book. I love, I love this book. It has a lot of wisdom in it. Um, Anna, Grandmother of Jesus, channeled by Claire Hartsong. Um, is also a book that I used to go to a lot. And Harry Edwards. Now, Harry Edwards Sanctuary still exists in England. He was a hands-on healer. He could actually do hands-on. Um, he was the last resort for many. They would write him. He would get thousands of letters um, a year. Um, and he once filled Albert Hall, where people would come, and then he would do healings on stage, but he wasn't really about that. He was much more humble. And his book is called The Healing Intelligence. And he has many others. So again, I'm driving in this direction where I'm saying, how are these people doing this? I know it's possible for me to do this. What can I glean from what all of these people have to offer? Um, Lou Smith, this is a great book. Philip Smith writes a memoir about his father, who was a dowser, believe it or not, in the 50s in Florida. The book is called Walking Through Walls and a phenomenal healer. In fact, he was arrested at least three times for practicing medicine without a license until someone came forward and said, um, hey, if you're a reverend, then um, you carry a reverend card. That'll help protect you. But the reason this title is Walking Through Walls is because one day Philip, the son, came home after a night out. He'd forgotten his keys. I think he was in high school. And he knocks on the door to get in. And he says this Lurch character, if you know the Adams family, opened the door and said, oh, you're the son. Uh, you're, are you the son of? of Louis Smith. And he said, yes. And the Lurch character said to him, well, haven't you learned to walk through walls yet? So <laughs> this is a really fun book to read and it, it's full of information. Lou Smith used to douse um, antidotes. So he would have these vials that were empty, like homeopathy, only they were empty vials with names written on them. And then he would douse in whatever antidote was needed for that person. Um, anyway, I really great book. And then Reality Shifts, Cynthia Sue Larson. Um, someone had mentioned that their pendulum had disappeared. Um, yeah, reality shifting happens and uh, it can come back. Yeah. So, um, so, so here's some stories from my experience. I come back to these for comic relief because I look back and I just go, oh, Melinda, what were you thinking? So <laughs> stuff I tried that didn't work and stuff I tried that did work. The first thing that happened to me um, when I started dowsing after this whole medium, you know, medium, I picking up a pendulum was kind of like going backwards, but I had gotten so scared of what was out there that I had shut down all of that mediumship ability and I had to start over with dowsing. It was really interesting. And I had a very difficult time. I was going through a particularly bad patch and I was lying on the side of my bed and this woman appears. She doesn't have wings, but she's like this. And her head is bowed and I can tell that she is trying not to scare me. Because at that time, I was so jumpy. I was afraid of everything. And um, turns out it was one of my guides. And 
it was just a lovely moment. And I remember like blinking, like over my eyes and like, is that real? Am I seeing that with my real eyes? <laughs> and she was, you know, there to show me that she did exist and she was there to be with me. She didn't say a word. Of course, had she, I probably would have gone off the rails. Um, so after reading Fourth Un Uncle in the Mountain, I got into some other book. I can't remember what it was, but it, they had talked about putting light bubbles and things outside of your house, like a bubble tree. I don't remember what it was to attract energies and stuff. And I thought, wow, that's really interesting. So in fear, of course, because I was always afraid of everything that was happening. Um, my husband had an acupuncture practice where we were living in San Francisco and our, our office and our apartment were one and the same. So two of the rooms he would use for patients. And of course, I was so afraid of everything. And I remember someone telling me, oh, you don't want any disincarnates, you know, get rid of the disincarnates. And I thought, okay. So I drew it with a hand, with my finger, a la fourth uncle in the mountain, no disincarnates allowed on an etheric sign. It was just this etheric. And I put it on the front door of our office apartment. Well, that morning, his first patient didn't show up and his second patient was late. And, he, and my husband's very zen. And he says, you know, Melinda, I think you need to take that sign down. And I said, why? And he said, because disincarnance just means that people are out of their body and they come to me for healing to get back in their bodies. Oh, my God. I was I felt so bad. Here I was warding off his patients, you know, and they can, would come to him for a healing. So I, I took the sign down. I felt really bad. And luckily he had someone that um, came in as a um, later on in the day. But uh, that those things work, you know, if you really write these things down etherically and you put these signs, they work. I learned. I was like, <laughs> here's another story. I woke up in my bedroom and I'm looking at the far corner and there's a family, a mom and a dad and a, a little girl, and they're all huddled together. And I thought, what the heck are you all doing in my room? And I realized that they were lost and they were all together. And it was the first time I had really encountered this idea of helping energies move on. And they were so sweet and they were so humble and they were so scared. Um, and again, it's that blinking, like, is that for real? Am I really seeing what's there? <laughs> and um, so they helped me learn about what it was like to help others move on. Um, and I hadn't, you know, they, they were gone. I don't, I'm sure they got to where they were going. Um, subtle body healing. This is a quick story about um, Carolyn Stillman and Ed Stillman and I were all pretty good friends. And um, I stayed at their house in Arizona and, and Ed had said to me, if you become a basic school teacher, um, then I'll teach you everything I know about well dowsing. And then you have to give a talk at our dowsing meeting. So. Anyway, we were friends and he had called me right before this years and years later, he had called me right before they were moving to California and said, um, Carolyn has the shingles. And I said, oh, um, well, I have a, a, a sheet that might help. It's an etheric body because Carolyn's very sensitive to energies. And uh, he said, oh, teach it to me. So I faxed him at the time. I faxed him over the um, sheet. And we went one by one through this etheric body healing work that I had learned um, and uh, through Robert J. Wade Mahaney, who was another dowser, one of his students. And all of a sudden, we get towards the end of the whole protocols. There's like 14 protocols, but then each protocol, there's another seven layers. So we're talking about... Um, 
adding subtle body energies, colors, numbers, rays, meridians, glands, you're balancing things, you're looking at chakras, you know, it's a whole, there's a whole book on that I wrote. Anyway, I'm on the phone with him and he says, wait a minute. And he says, I hear the vacuum and he runs downstairs <laughs> and he's got the phone with him. And he's like, Carolyn, you're up. Because if anybody's ever had the shingles, you know how painful, I've had them. I know how painful. And they, since they were getting ready to move, they needed to clean the house. And she says, I feel great. I just felt like I needed to get up and move and, da- and, and, and vacuum. So he and I both kind of chuckled and he says, wow, this stuff really works. <laughs> um, and I have great respect and love for him. He's moved on. So anyway, that's that story. Radiation reduction. My husband had a client that came in recently who shuffled in. Her head was down. She shuffled in. Um, He had never seen her before. And he was treating her. And when he came, I had seen her. And when he came up, because you do one side and then the other when you're doing acupuncture. When he came up, I said, do you think I could help her? And he said, yeah, I think you can. And... I started dowsing and I hear radiation. Radi- I said, oh, she's got a radiation issue. So I start using my, I'm using a dowsing rod. I'm back to my rod these days, but I, I have a pendulum. This is what I learned on, by the way. So I'm reducing the radiation in this woman through all the permissions, of course. And the rod is running and it ran for I want to say five minutes at least before it stopped. And he goes downstairs and he turns her over and he does the other side. And then when she comes back upstairs, she's standing upright. I mean, a totally different person. He revealed to me that, well, he told her, my wife feels like you have a radiation issue. She revealed to him that she stands in front of a microwave. She owns a restaurant and her workstation, you know, six or seven days a week is right in front of a microwave that she uses all day long. And she had already came through breast cancer. So that radiation reduction is a really good one. And it's good for man-made radiation as well as, um, you know, uh, solar radiation. So if you're flying, reduce radiation. That, that to me, is a very powerful tool. And uh, I was shocked when he told me that. Because I had no idea. I was just, you know, doing everything I could to help her. Um, Here is a happy note. This is a church without a roof in San Galgano, Tuscany. It, I went there um, and I stood, the minute I walked into this church, I could hear the choir sing, I mean, or monks or whoever was there. I could, I could hear them singing. It was amazing. The energies in this place were off the hook. It was so beautiful. I didn't want to leave. So anyway, there's a picture of me. I thought, you know, when, not only do we feel, but we can hear and we can see, right? So we become clairaudient, clairsentient, um, clairvoyant. And this was one of those times when I didn't walk into a church and feel the oppression and the sadness of everybody, you know, and all the prayers and all that stuff. <laughs> this was a time where you walk in and you went, oh, wow, this is awesome. I just feel it. It was beautiful, beautiful. And this was in um, 20, I want to say 2016, maybe. I live in Hawaii. I went to visit the petroglyphs, um, one of the many sites of the petroglyphs. And I got a lesson from the local petroglyph people. So I I drive up and by myself, I had rented a car. I flew over to that island. I live in Oahu. This was a different island rented a car. I drove into the lot. I walk up to the signage. And um, as soon as I step through um, 
that area that's got kind of a like a pergola. So you step through it. I kid you not, there were probably 50 to 75, that's what it felt like, beings waiting for me. And I, I, I was like, what's happening here? And they said, oh, you're welcome, daughter of Hawaii. And I thought, I am not Hawaiian. I, you know, I just moved here because of the fire, right? My husband was born and raised here. When I lost my house, this is where we came. And I said, whoa, okay, thank you, thank you. I don't know who you are. I don't know what this is about, but thank you. And in order to get to the petroglyphs, you had to walk along this really hot, dry, dusty trail. And it was hot that day. And I'm walking and I'm following. Um, I think they're around me. And all of a sudden I hear, step up on this rock. And it's about halfway there and I'm hot. And I step up onto this rock and all of a sudden this cool ocean breeze comes in and just cools me off completely. So they're looking out for me, whoever these beings are. And I go, I continue back to where the petroglyphs are. And I walk around. They're um, cordoned off with some, you know, wood fencing. And people have... Um, misused it and gone in and done rubbings and all that kind of stuff. It, you know, it's not very nice. There, more respect is needed. So I went around and I sat down and I had a canteen with me and it had some water in it and I was drinking and I put it down and the canteen tipped over and I put it back up. And a second later, it was tipped over again. And then I put it back up. And another second later, it was tipped over again. And I said, okay, what's the message here? Oh, of course, of course, I need to be more respectful. I need to leave an offering. <laughs> Duh, right? So I poured a little out on purpose this time. And I said, thank you. And I thanked the petroglyph energies. And I... Um, and they had asked me to bring light to that area. And um, I was gifted a little, a little shell. And they said, only take one. Said, okay. And then I came home. And from then on, when I sit and meditate, I, I think of them and I send love and light to, the, to that part of the island. But they taught me, you, you know, welcome and you need to respect us. <laughs> <laughs> show a little humility so I had a client so I get visitations from all kinds of energies and I had a um, client a beautiful client who used to go to the retreats on um, I think they were on Maui with Ram Das, and she had um, called me because her mother was dying and asked me um, what um, she could do and um, Tong Len came up for her so all of this Buddhist studies everything that I've been working on Tong Len is a type of a meditation where you breathe in um, and, you're, and there's no chance of defilement and you really need to you know uh, Pema Kodron has one on um, YouTube you can look it up on how to do it but you breathe in these energies and you breathe out the causes of love and light. And that, and it co comes through your heart. And, um, and as we're talking about this, Ram Das shows. <laughs> I never was, I, I, you know, be here now. We all knew that, right? Um, and he comes in and, and he's like, wow, you're doing great work, kid. And then he takes off. And I was like, well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and the client was able to help the mother pass peacefully doing this Tonglen work. And I was privileged and honored to meet uh, Ram Das. I also had a visit from Paramahansa Yogananda years, years, years earlier. Um, after I became a a Kriya Bhavan, they call him in the organization. I'd learned Kriya Yoga. 
and I was intently, uh, this was in my fear mode stage and I was on my knees and I was um, meditating and praying and, and, um, and everything had, was scaring me, everything. Like I couldn't tell what was good from what wasn't good. You know, what, who was helpful, who wasn't helpful because I had been just battered around so much and I was in, I was in fear all the time. And, um, Yogananda shows up in my meditation and I was always told if you don't know if an energy is, um, nefarious or beneficial, ask them to show you their light. So I said to Yogananda, um, excuse me, but could you show me your light, please? And he went, <laughs> and I mean, it was so bright that I was like, I had to pull back and cover my eyes. <laughs> and I said, okay, thank you. Um, I was shocked. And then he looked, he looked at me and he said, I'll come back when you're ready. And he left. <laughs> So they look out for us. They know where we are. You know, all of these energies that are here to help us, um, they show up and they're there for us. And they, they, they'll, he, and he has consequently, su uh, sorry, subsequently um, come back to visit me um, every now and then. This is a story. I love this story. This is Hula and the Tummy Egg. It was an article that I'd written. I had the privilege of swimming with the dolphins and this is who I hear. And um, I don't condone, by the way, any captivity of any dolphins. These were all born in captivity. So since they're already there, we can send them light and love and appreciate their noble service. Um, and so I had swam with Hua and I have pictures of me on the web where I'm actually swimming with him and he's kind of playing with me. And I had gone home after this experience, I just elated off the hook, just wow. And I was able to tune into him. Um, and one time, I don't know, maybe three weeks later, um, I'm talking, I tune into Hua and he says, hey, one of us in the pod, there's six that live together has a tummy ache. And I said, oh, my God. I told my husband, I'm like, oh, Martin, one of the dolphins has a stomach ache. I don't know what to do. And then, of course, a few minutes later, who was like, don't worry about it. The humans are on it. So all their trainers. Were, you know, I said, OK. So a week later, I drive over to visit Hua because he's like six minutes from my house. So I drive over. I go in. I go up to the trainers and I say, hey, how are you doing? Um, I heard one of your dolphins had a tummy ache. She said, yeah, we took care of that. And then she looked at me and said, how did you know? <laughs> and I said, well, they told me. And she, she, you could just see the little flick in her eyes where it went like, uh but she wasn't about to betray that. It was a little shocking to her. Um, and another Hua story, I'm driving and Hua, Hua tunes in and he says, I'm bored. And I said, you're a dolphin. You have, you have pods, you have people. What do you mean you're bored? I said, okay, I'll be right there. And I drive over, park the car. I go in I, and I say, hey, where's Hua? And he's sequestered in an area by himself. And I said, well, why is he by himself there? And uh, they said, well, we had to do some medical tests. And so we've left him. So I go over and I'm like, oh, who I'm so sorry you're here by yourself. And I had my camera with me, my phone, and I, and I was videoing him and I couldn't quite catch him at the right time where he would come up the water. So I, I, I told him, I said, who I missed that. Could you please come around again and I'll take a video of you popping up? And of course, he came around again and he pops his head up and then he goes down. So he he did it for me. I, I looked high and low to find that video to share it with you because it, it's very funny. Um, anyway, so you can tune into animals too. Who uh, they're all it's all available to us. All these different realms. It's just a matter of tapping into 
which energy field you're, t- you're at. I have a, a butterfly nursery and I raise um, Asian swallowtails and monarchs. And one of these, one time these Asian swallowtails, they start out in this fun little cocoon where they lean up against and then they come out these gorgeous. And I, I let them out. I mean, I don't, I don't keep them as soon as they're fly, they fly, they leave. And this one Asian swallowtail um, before it left said, thank you kindly. It brought me to my knees to hear, to hear that. So these experiences open our hearts up to um, wonderful things. And this, is, this isn't even half of the stories that I have um, that I've accumulated, but I thought I would just share the ones that I could. Um, sorry about the images. So I had an earring drop in out of nowhere. So I'm talking to the lady who lost her pendulum in the pink couch. I was at a restaurant in Berkeley, California with a friend of mine. The earring came out. When I got home to San Francisco, I had to cross the bridge. I noticed I only had one earring. And I called the restaurant. I called my friend. And she said, oh, you could just ask for a reality shift. She said, stay positive and just say, this would be a good time for a reality shift. I had the one earring and I kept saying, oh, I love it. So it they were my favorite, some of my favorite pearl earrings. And I love this earring so much. And I, I would focus on it and I would say, thank you so much. And I don't care where it comes from. Just bring it back. You know, no questions asked. (laughs) Just bring back the earring. Um, And I did that for a whole day. No questions asked. Reality shift. Thank you so much. And uh, the next evening, I'm sitting on my bed. There's my slippers. And I hear a a thud, like real, like thud. And I look down, and it wasn't in any of my pockets. I had checked all of my pockets. It came, as they say, out of thin air. It, It wasn't near anything. It just dropped onto the floor. (laughs) <laughs> first time that ever happened for me. I was so excited about that. And I had read about this in Autobiography of a Yogi where there were yogis that could bring in food. They could bring in food or they could, you know, aport in um, different objects. I know it's possible. I get it. It's really possible. And I guess it's a different perspective of how you look at it or how you ask for it back. But this is what worked for me. You know, being positive, I sure could use a reality shift. Thank you so much. No questions asked. It worked. Uh, and that was recently. <laughs> that was uh, probably 2019. And here's a story I want to, I did an interview with a woman who does um, equestrian um training, leadership training with horses. And I went to see her um, just about a month ago. Her name is Ariana Strozzi and she's in Santa Rosa now. And she has, uh, you could find her in uh, Wisdom Keepers. I went to visit Luna uh, is this horse. And I was there actually to see Ariana and I brought some dowsing rods she wanted to learn. And so I taught her and her husband on two copper rods, you know, where the well was, that kind of stuff. I just showed him some simple things, what, how to find things. You know, if you lose your remote, you can just use one and you can ask, you know, show me the line of bearing to my remote and take me around the furniture. And sure enough, you know, it took them around the couch and all these places. And then it, the remote was hidden somewhere and they found it. Um, but I, I really wanted to visit with her horses because it was a, a really special time at that time astrologically. So I went out and Luna was totally ignoring me. It was on the other end of the pen and uh, of the, I forget what you call it, the round area where they keep them. It's not really a pen, it's something. The paddock. And she, she says, oh, go on in. So I walk in and I walk up to Luna and Luna's like, whatever, you know. 
And Ariana says, think of the horse as a dowsing instrument. I said, hmm. So I, as soon as I grounded myself, Luna got interested. Luna came over to me as soon as I just got rid of everything that I was thinking about. I just said, okay, I'm here. And I just, she came over to me. Not only did she come over to me, she followed me to where I left the paddock and stood there and waited. And I asked, I said, I'd like to do a selfie. So here's a selfie of me and Luna. I'm not very good at them. <laughs> but as I was leaving and walking to my car, she watched me the whole way. And um, Ariana has told me that they were, she was pretty much not working with humans anymore in terms of leadership role and stuff that she'd been doing it for a very long time. So I felt really honored that, you know, that Luna paid, paid attention and thought I was worth investigating. I'm now doing crystal work. So I went from my mediumship spiritualism, giving um, spontaneous uh, readings to the congregation, to dowsing um, with a pendulum and a rod. And now I'm, and now the crystals are starting to talk to me and um, they're offering their assistance. And, you know, I went to the Lake Shrine of Paramahansa Yogananda in um, the Pacific Palisades area in California. And when I went to visit um, the interior that they had, I had no idea. He had a whole case of crystals that people had given him that he had collected. I didn't know this. Um, so here we are back into the earth and using crystals. And um, I'm now using them as part of my healing modality. I do health readings and then um, whatever's needed for that person, for, the, for whatever level we can meet at, um, then I create a crystal grid for them. They're either permanent or I take a photo and I send the image to the person to meditate with. Um, I've gotten amazing feedback on these, not just from Cynthia, but other people who have said that the energies, they can feel the energies. And it's the formation of the crystals themselves. In this particular grid, there's two chrysoprases, which are green. And then there's the rose quartz crystals, which you can identify smooth. There's also um, smoky quartz in there. And the crystals in the center are the Tibetan crystals. So this is an area that I was um, led to head into um, a year or two, about two years ago, I guess. now. And I'm doing a lot of work with this. This is very powerful. And then I understood why I was supposed to be doing this work for people. And so... I will either keep a grid up for someone here in a tray where I douse what they need, or I'll send them an image and then um, they can meditate with that. Either way, it's the same. The reason I was supposed to work with crystals is because, guess what? I'm now working with crystals and constellations. So I had a dream where a a very kind Celtic gentleman came through to show me a new technique using constellations with crystals. So you can bring the healing down to earth, uniting the stars with the crystals. It was a phenomenal experience in my dream. This book is in pre-order. I'll be teaching this at the workshop in the ORI, this work. It's very, very powerful. Um, Collaborating with the stars for restorative projects. Um, yeah, I feel really honored um, about this gentleman. And I did write an article about him. His name is Crack, C-R-A-I-C, which means, by the way, in Celtic, good fun. <laughs> so <laughs> it was good fun. And I did write about my dream, and it's um, it's in the blogs and in the book, and I will be at ORI teaching this work here. There. 
And it comes with, um, I have a bag of crystals that each participant gets. They get a book and then they get um, sheer cellophane copies of the constellations to use. You know, I will be teaching that there. So here's the few books I've written. Uh, Spirit of Dowsing was written in 2009. Um, the Crystal Constellation book on the lower right is going to come out in 2024. The Etheric Body book um, is the brown one at the lower level. And then Dowsing to Clear Emotional Level 1 and Spirit Level, Mental Level 2. And then Becoming Your Own Intuitive Healer. Those were all written in 20, 2009 all the way through 2011, 12, 13. I think Etheric Body Book was written in 20, 2019 or 2020. So um, you can find the book at um, on the blog, bookstore, whatever. If, you, if you're interested in them, they're how-to, they're easy. Um, this pendulum, by the way, at the Etheric Body down here on the lower left, it's this one right here. I don't know if you can see it. This pendulum right here. It has a tiger skin in it. And um, the story behind that is I was having lunch. My husband says to me, hey, let's go have lunch at this Thai restaurant that we always eat at. And um, I said, we ate there yesterday. And he said, no, 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 come on, let's go today. So we go in and there's only another couple in the restaurant. However, there are three monks eating and an entourage of maybe six people with them. And every time these people walk by, these monks, they are full on ground prostration. I mean, every time. And I said, oh my God, who are these monks? So I asked the owner if the monk, there is a head monk and two other monks would give me a blessing. And he said, I don't know, I'll be right back. And he talks to him. And and he says, he nods his head yes, and he motions me over. This is in a restaurant in the afternoon. Nobody else is in there except for maybe one other couple. They leave, so it's just us. And I kneel down, and this is a, a Thai wood monk, and he's got layers and layers and layers of robes on, and he's barefoot. He's obviously been barefoot for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> and I kneel down in front of him and he full, pulls back the fold of one of his um, drapes and he pulls out an antler and he starts whacking me on the head with it. And it hurt. It was like, bam, ouch, thank you. Bam, ouch, thank you. And he did this like five times. And I thought, oh my gosh. Okay, I don't know what this is about, but thank you very much. You know, I, I in fact I didn't even thank him. I think I was just so stunned. I just and and he, and I get up to leave, and he puts his hand up and he opens another pouch of another layer, and he pulls out this amulet. If you could see it or not, and it's um, metal with glass, and it has a tiger skin, and the tigers die of natural causes. And, and then they use the skins and this, I did not know this was meant for protection at the time. And so I go back to my meal. It had been served. I sit down and within minutes I'm bawling. I'm, I'm crying. It's just, I can't control it. It's uncontrollable weeping. And my husband's just very quiet sitting there. And I realized that I had actually not said Thank you to this month. I hadn't said thank you. And I felt really bad about that. And he's walking away. So his back is to me. And I take a moment and I go into prayer and I say, thank you so very much. Um, I know you helped me let loose of something that I couldn't reach. Thank you. He's on the other end of the restaurant, almost out the door. And he turns around and waves at me. <laughs> so, you know, I did not say this thank you out loud. It was in my mind to him. 
And, and, and so all of these experiences are showing me that, yes, healing is possible. Yes, we can communicate on these other levels. Yes, there is harmony and balance available to us. Yes, we can do remote healing and do remarkable things together. It's, it's my drive and my hope and, you know, Harry Edwards and Lou Smith and all the other wonderful um, healers, dowsers that um, have shown proficiency in this type of work. I mean, Harold McCoy, right? Um, it, it's just, it, it's like, yes, we can do this. We can do this. I know we can do this. We all have the capability to do this. And these books and all of the stories are just reminders of, and I'm sure you all have your own stories. Use those stories because they're meant for you. They're meant for you to remember, you know, who you are as this divine being that has the capability of bringing forward this um, healing and whatever modality you use as a, a divine channel um, in divine flow. You know, that's really, um, that's really where it's at. So anyway, I, 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 this is what I've learned, you know, I think it might, it, after decades of trying to purify and meditate, <laughs> you know, I know it's possible because I see it all the time. It's presented to me all the time. And um, working with clients, doing health readings for them and trying to elevate their understanding of who they are and um, meeting them where they are and then raising the vibratory frequency, if you will, or the understanding of what's happening um, is really important to me. I, I love my work. I love what I do. And again, it could take a lifetime, but I know I can do what Harriet Boots did. I know I can do what Lou Smith did. I know I have that within me to do that. And there's lots of tools and resources out there for you to um, help yourself and others. We just have to be open to it. So if you find something and you learn something, it's that's not the end. That's just the beginning. You keep opening, you keep learning. It's not like, oh, I have these crumbs and I'm keeping these crumbs for myself. There's a whole bread out there. There's a whole buffet of healing available for us out there. Um, so, you know, instead of holding tightly, open our hands so that we can receive. Um, anyway, that's my story. <laughs> I know I went really fast. I'm sorry. I have a tendency to talk really quickly. Um, Spirit wanted me to offer a gift for you. Um, something that's needed right now during these times. Right now. And you can use this right now. Um, so anyone who is up for it, great. If not, it's okay. I understand. Um, I'm just going to use my rod and I'm going to tell you what I'm doing so you can do it for yourself. So we all think we understand what grounding is, right? Grounding to the earth. Well, right now, during these changing times, right? Not to mention, you know, the solar flares and um, all the other things that are happening energetically. Uh, that are coming in from all different directions, what's needed now more than ever is to ground. And grounding to the earth is not enough anymore. You have to ground down to what I would call the Tao or down to the Om. You, this is really, I have found this to be super important. Because the energies are shifting all the time. You cannot just ground to earth anymore. You have to go beyond earth. Because all of these cosmic energies are coming in. So I'm offering you, for anyone who is um, up for this, the gift of grounding you all on this call. 
right now down into what I would call the OM, if you understand that, the, the, the Tao, if you understand that. And my husband always says the Tao will provide. So what does that Tao will provide mean? That's the deepest faith that you have, the Tao, the OM. So take a moment and just and feel your behind in your chair and and come out of the mental and begin to go down, all the way down, all the way down, all the way down to the arm, past the earth, all the way down, all the way down. I'm just going to keep running my rod until everyone who's participating is there so that you all know what it feels like to be in that place of that super grounded um, state. Okay. Down, ground down to the ohm. Keep going, not quite there. All the way down, all the way down, all the way down. The essence of who you are knows what the Om and the Tao are. You don't need to worry about that. You are, yes, there, right there. If you can take a minute and feel what that feels like, that's it. That's, that's where we want to operate from every single day if we can. Ground down, all the way down to that. Oh, that's lovely. Yay. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Melinda. That was really awesome and enjoyable and inspiring. And um, I haven't been keeping track. Does anyone see any questions in in the chat? And if you have questions, you're welcome to raise your hand and do them. Uh, to ask them, Melinda's well, not taking any questions on personal health. But um, if you have any other questions, then feel free to either put them in the chat or raise your hand. And we'll and you, can, you can reach me at any of these. Uh, the website, this phone number, is a, uh, it'll be a voicemail, but I will get back to you. And... Um, Anyway, should I stop sharing now? What would you like? Um, I would leave it up for a moment longer so that people can okay. get your contact information. Okay. And, you know, right now we I see a question from John Brown with his hand up. So, John, if you would like to unmute and speak. Yeah, thank you, uh, Melinda. That's great. And I'm curious, what would you consider a regenerative project? Regenerative project. Oh, you know, um, <laughs> that's a good question. So um, cars, any machinery, land, people, pets, you name it. You could, you know, if you wanted to, um, if you were having trouble with your, like your modem or your washing machine or something, you could, you could use that as a regenerative project. Um, it covers everything because everything in its essence has a vibration and um yeah how's that yeah, for yeah, that? yeah. and the, the reason i was asking what i'm really engaged in uh these days is regenerative agriculture and regenerative land landscape excellent um and uh wanting to um establish beaver dam analogs all over the place wherever water flows uh and so yeah that's that's the context in which i'm asking the question that's excellent so then what you want to you know when you're looking at re so you know you're you're in and part of the regenerative process for you would be inviting of course the davis of the land to participate and um you know help you uh, and uh, follow your vision of that and then be open to whatever the vision is that they have, which is always going to be greater than what we have. Right? 
Source always, <laughs> we think we know what we want. And then Source goes, hey, how about this? And it's always better than what we expected. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I hope that helps. And you can also enlist, you know, the assistance of the beavers. I've yeah. seen a lot of that going on. And you know who you would really want to get interested in and work and talk to is um, Patrick McManaway. He does amazing uh, regenerative land work. And um, I did do an interview with Wisdom Keepers with him. And you can see the before and after pictures. Um, or you can just go to his website and you know follow him. He, he, he's, good. he's really good at that. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank Melinda, you. Kirsten would like to know if you can ground another person to the OM or do they have to do it for themselves? Oh, um, well, you know, um, permissions, right? I'm, I'm always one for permissions. Um, if you get permission to do it, yeah, absolutely do it. Now, you know, what's really interesting is that um, <laughs> I used to sort of take for granted the can I, may I, should I? And then it started to occur to me recently. I always get knocked back to basics. You know, can I? Yes. May I? Yes. Um, is there any reason for me not to? Yes. <laughs> so should I? No. And that's um, the should I part is um, been holding me up lately because I'm always like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. And then I get, yeah, you can do it. Of course, you have the chutzpah, you have the, you know, you have it in you. Do you have permission? Sure. Should you? No. So um, always look for that extra um, should you part because there's a reason for that. And it's usually, for me, it usually has to do with my energy and how much I put out or if I'm regenerating. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, you can, of course. Sure, you can absolutely do that. But um the person that you're thinking of, I get a yes and a no to. So I would um, reevaluate um, why you want to do that. And is it, do the, can I, may I, should I? Because I can see the person you're thinking of. And I, I'm still getting, I'm getting a yes and a no. So there's something to, more to that. Alrighty, so now we have um, Tamara, who's got her hand raised. Tamara, if you want to unmute and speak. And I think you can quit sharing now, Melinda, so we can get you. Oh, thank you. Okay, good. Thanks. Okay, I just wondered if you know anything about time travel, if it's possible, if it's just fantasy that we see on movies. I think it's real, but I don't know for sure, which is why I'm asking. That's a really good question. So um, in my line of work, um, we do go back to the past and we can go into the future. So does that mean my whole physical body is time traveling into a future that looks just like what I have? I, I don't know. But I do know that I can go into the future and look back. And I can go into the past and look forward. Does that make any sense? But I can't tell you like, well, I'm, you know, I'm sitting in 200 years in the future and I'm telling you this. I don't know about that. But is time travel possible? Heck yeah. Well, you think you're just in a physical body? No way. You're, a, you're an energetic response to the divine and so therefore you have access to all of these things are we ready to use that access right that's the question so i would say 100 percent, yes it's a matter of for me it's a matter of purification meditation getting quiet hearing what's needed what what would be the purpose of me to do that is there a, is there a, is it in the highest of good for me right now to go and jump into that? Is there something I need there? You know, I think the, pur the purpose is really the question there. What would be the purpose of that for you? Perfect. Thank you so much. So in the chat, Jack would like to know, 
Besides grounding to the Tao, what do you consider to be the most important focus for individual dowsers and what dowsers can be doing for the collective? Mm. That's a that's a tall order. <laughs> well, first of all, if you ground to the Tao, everything is possible, right? So you're, 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 when you ground into the Tao, you'll find your dowsing's more consistent these days because I've noticed that when I'm not, my dowsing has a tendency to fluctuate. Be, and the reason it does for me is because I can see into multi-dimensions simultaneously. So, um, <laughs> so is there me, anything else that you would consider to be really important as a focus for individual or collective? Um, let me just ask my team that. Hold on. Yes, they said there's quite a list. Um, <laughs> um, if you speak it, it will be on the tape so people can access it. Okay. Well, we don't want to sound Pollyanna-ish. However, we would love you to consider the idea of what harmony and balance means to you and not what you think it should mean to others. It's an individual concept, harmony and balance, because everybody has their own version of harmony and balance. So understanding what harmony and balance to you inside of you, the essence of who you are, is going to be paramount to moving through these um, dimensional qualities that are coming your way. And right now, all of you are being prepared for a, a, um, um, a, a systematic changing that's coming forward. Um, so you may feel it in a physical way, you may feel it in an energetic way. You know, there could be pressures, um, there could be uh, where, um, you want to avoid multitasking right now. Hmm. Stay focused on what you're doing one thing at a time. Hmm. If you're driving, drive. Don't drive and play with the radio. If you're, you know what I'm saying? This is right now the, the most important thing coming in with these new energies is one, you know you're better than okay. <laughs> First thing, you're better than okay. You're fine. Second thing is stay grounded to the Tao. Third thing is remember what harmony and balance is to you. The deepest part of the faith of who you are and what you have to offer um, is going to emanate from that within you so you don't have to do anything. When you're in that state, it automatically ripples out across the universe, across dimensions. So it's, it's not a matter of doing so much as it's a, it's a state of understanding that you are in harmony and you are in balance and what that means. And no matter, you know, the willow trees being, you know, snapped around, you're okay. You're better than okay. And that when you are in that quiet place of calming the mind, feeling the heart, dropping into the heart, that's the place, the heart. Speaking from the heart. Don't double task things, stay focused. You know, the energies on, I want to say Tuesday, Wednesday, the energies last Wednesday were really off the hook. I mean, they were like, what? The inner chihuahua really wanted to come out. You know, the fire breathing dragon, <laughs> and I love dragons, but it was the energy of that um, that was really predominant. I could feel that lots of things happening. So when that happens, you go back to the knowing that you're okay, you're better than okay, you're protected, you're fine, you're love. 
will carry you through this energetic shift and not to worry. As my friend says, how good can it get every day? How good can it get? Does that answer your question? Yes, that was awesome. Thank you very much. Um, we have Jane Barr with her hand up. So Jane, if you'd like to lower your hand. and We've got about five more minutes uh, before I officially close the meeting. So. Okay. I'm going to be at ORI in your workshop, and I'm wondering if there's anything that it would help me get even more out of it, anything I could read ahead of time or anything I should be doing, like playing with my crystals or what What can I do to prepare to really get the absolute most out of it? Oh, Jane, you know what? Your energy is so beautiful. I can just feel the love from you. Um, ooh, you're going to make me cry. Um, I, as Melinda, I'm going to say there's nothing you, you know, you'll be there. You'll receive exactly what you need to receive. Um, the book and the crystals that I'm bringing are all tuned. I've, I've worked on each one individually. I've doused their compatibility. Um, they're, they've all been packaged perfectly and beautifully with the help of my friend Crack. So you'll have everything you need in that workshop for you um, personally, is there anything I, you know, I would say, no, you're, you're good to go lady. Hey, thank you so much. <laughs> you're awesome. <laughs> okay. Let's have another question from the chat. Uh, Ronald would like to know the best way to get proper answers. Accurate one. From what? From dowsing, from just intuition, from, you know, that, that's a big question. That's a really big question because it involves so many different layers. Are you having trouble with your accuracy? You want to unmute um, Ron and let her know. He has been asking that question. I think, yes, through his dowsing has been. Not if that's I, right. I want to get I want to get proper answers when I maybe yes or no questions. Okay. Sometimes I'll get a yes and sometimes I'll get a no. And then, yeah. then um I'm thinking that I'm doing okay and all of a sudden I'll ask you more questions in relation to the same subject I'm talking about. <laughs> come up come up something completely different. And so this is really throwing me off. I'm thinking, well, you know, I'm asking the right question, but sometimes I get a yes, sometimes I get a no. Has it and always been like that? Has, has, it, has right. it been? Let her answer, but go ahead and mute yourself because we're getting feedback from you. So, so my question, you can put it in the chat, yes or no, is, is this a phenomena that's happened lately or is this something that's been going on for his whole dowsing career? Well, this has been going on probably just started up lately, you know, within the last month or so. Okay. I thought it was that's, doing pretty good, good, but then then all of a sudden I'm getting the crazy answers and I'm thinking, no, that's not right. But this isn't right. Okay. So um, go ahead and mute, Ron, please. Mute. There you go. Thanks. All right. Okay. So that's a phenomena that's happening lately. Um, that's why grounding down is important, down to the ohm. And um, it's, it's, it's just a fluctuation in the energetic patterns. And sometimes you just have to walk away. You just put your dowsing down and you walk away, right? And um, other, other times, the deeper implications of what's happening and why the dowsing is, is fluctuating between yes and no's and you're not getting correct answers is because you're being asked to reevaluate yourself in a whole new way to the level uh, of who you are. There's things that are coming up that need to be cleared for you specifically. And the, that's a sign for you to 
um, take a few steps back and start to reevaluate you know, yourself in a in a new way, um, so that uh, you can also um, feel good about what you're doing in, in your dowsing. Okay. All right. Well, it's time for our official closing, but stay oh, tuned. Oh, there's a D. Oh, there's a D. Yeah. So we'll come back if you agree. I'm just going to close the meeting officially, and then we'll come back and you can answer. Okay. We'll do your little bonus Q and A. So it's not, it's not the end. So stay tuned. I'm just going to thank everybody for being here and remind them that in April we're having Gary Clapp, who will be presenting. Um, dowsing life force and he'll be showing us how to use the bovis um, chart to get the beneficial energy level of anything you want.